Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Bring It On. So there's a couple of things I forgot to inspect in the last episode, so we're going to do that before we start uh, dealing with the void monsters. So if you come over here and click on this portrait, uh, it depicts a gigantic serpent devouring a star. I didn't notice that when I came in, but I didn't hover my mouse over it uh, in the last episode. I didn't realize I could inspect it. And then the scanner, uh, some kind of a crudely constructed scanner. You can't deduce much from its appearance. And a computer. So unable to connect, yeah, same stuff. Uh, documents. Shadowlith Archive. This is a collection of a collaborative sign of collaborative scientific notes, reports and papers on Shadowlith recovered following Shadow Emission LEAD-124, which it wiped out most of the data in the Special Laboratory database. The collection is incomplete and provides limited corporeal insight into the most basic interactions between Shadowlith and our reality. It should only serve for archival purposes. A discovery. The black monolith was first uncovered in the, at the Abyssal Excavation Site 6, exact year and date unknown, closest estimate between LEBD 20 and 30, several years after the construction of Abyssal Station 0. The monolith is a 3 meter tall, deep black structure in the shape of a hexagonal prism augmented with pyramidal frustums at its top and bottom. It is composed of a material so dense it required four heavy sublifters to bring it to the station. At 108 tons, its density was calculated to be 30.016 grams per centimeter cubed. Transporting it from the manufacturing dome required reinforcing the floor with RG panels and using super super lubric mats to eliminate friction when pushed by strongmen. Uh, composition test number 142-143. Date unavailable. Uh, the test was performed after an upgrade to the nuclear magnetic resonance uh, spectroscope module in the hopes that it will finally allow us to determine the, the molecular... I keep saying... I keep putting an in there. Molecular structure of the black monolith. Also, also constituents. Last episode I couldn't pronounce... Constituents. I kept saying constituents. It's constituents. See, I told you I knew how to pronounce it. And as soon as I was done recording, I said it. So, there you go. Anyway, determine the mo molecular structure of the black monolith after numerous failed attempts. To our dismay, but sadly consistent with all of our previous tests, this one too gave us no results. The black monolith, the black monolith is impenetrable to all our instruments and impervious to all tools with, with which we've tried to obtain samples. In agreement with Dr. Marson, we are ceasing all attempts at further testing the monolith's physical properties until means to obtain samples are provided. We'll instead focus all of our research on the shadow waves. Dr. Leif Boten. Uh, shadow waves. A shadow wave is a tran transverse wave radiated by the black monolith, which during its first half period exhibits measurable physical interactions, positive extancy, but no measurable interactions during its second half period, negative extancy. In normal conditions, the change between positive and negative extancy occurs at frequencies of uh, approximately 0.2 Hz, meaning that the wave completes one full cycle in approximately 0.4 Hz, with an average wavelength of approximately six mi 16 microns. The points where extancy states come to an end are called shadow wave extancy limits, or more specifically, negative and positive extancy limits for each of the respective states of interaction. The extent to which the shadow waves interact with material reality is not yet known, but so far we've measured the more obvious electromagnetic interactions. Effects of shadow waves on electromagnetic fields by Dr. E. Hermann Sigmarsson. Some weak nuclear interactions, radioactive decay at shadow wave extancy limits, Dr. Tarbin Vorengeir. And some strong nuclear interactions, quark cr chromodynamic uh, perturbations at shadow wave extancy limits, Dr. Stor Oivender. Oh hey! Unaccounted for increases and decreases in mass at extancy limits have also been measured, but due to its inconsistent manifestation and magnitude, we've yet to draw solid conclusions with respect to gravitational effects of the wave. Most of these perturbations and otherwise unexplained phenomena occur near, near or at extancy limits, whereas during positive extancy, the shadow wave carries energy in the form of regular electromagnetic wave starting at the negative and ending at the positive extancy limit of that period, in a somewhat predictable fashion, depending on the properties measured. How the energy is carried from positive to negative extancy limits, for all intents and purposes, how the wave comes into existence again, 
and why and how these limits, which can be represented as fields causing these interactions, manifest in space is yet unknown. What is clear is that the changes in this electromagnetic component wave during positive excency of the shadow wave is conserved throughout its negative excency, meaning that it, that it is without a doubt the same wave which alternates between affecting and not affecting physical reality, as all of our research suggests, and quite possibly all of its fundamental aspects. The electromagnetic wave, which we've studied the most of all interactions, exhibits an unusual kind of elliptical polarization defined by Holdenson's disjoint function, and formally has been dubbed the serpentine polarization, as its graph representation bears the likeness of a snake spiraling through space. All attempts at polarizing the wave in any way have proven unsuccessful, as the wave will be repolarized as soon as the shadow wave enters its negative excency, meaning that, after passing negative excency limit, the EM wave will again have serpentine polarization. Okay, shadow wave manipulation. So far we've determined that shadow wave can be partially manipulated through changes in the electromagnetic field <clears throat> during positive excency. Ex yeah, excency. This means that by giving the wave more energy at appropriate excency limits, we can, for instance, change its frequency in a manner that is consistent with our understanding of the laws of reality. However, this also produces amplified and so far unpredictable quantum effects at excency limits, both positive and negative, depending on how the wave had been manipulated and the medium through which it passes. The shadow waves can be directed through space by guiding them into Orion tubes with a massive magnetic field shaper at the base of the monolith. In these tubes we can shoot photons at specific intervals, aiming for either negative or positive excency limits, so that we may study the resulting quantum interactions. The consistency of Heinlein's law and electron-positron annihilation near ne negative excency limits by Dr. E. Herman Sigmarsson. The process can be dangerous if too much energy is introduced, which has resulted in two accidents already, but controlled wave manipulation at positive excency limits will create relatively stable changes in the wave. What quantum, inter what quantum interactions occur at negative excency limit, like the creation of new particles, actual and not virtual, is currently beyond the scope of our understanding. Object Negation Experiment Number 5 This experiment was conducted to test the hypothesized complete negation of objects from reality with PSWB, a phase shadow wave beam, technology. The object used for this experiment is a standard size pseudo brass cup suspended on a MO5 testing sphere. By channeling the shadow wave length to, through two 5.3 meter long Orion tubes and introducing increasing amounts of energy at every positive excency limit, we are able to achieve the desired frequency of 67.5 Hz for both waves. One wave is then continuously phase shifted in the range of approximately 175 to 185 degrees while the PSWB is being focused on the cup. After the darkening effect has achieved, another energy surge is needed to completely negate the cup from existence, a process which occurred in less than 0.15 seconds. The experiment, besides proving the uh, negation hypothesis also proves Boton's principle that strong chemical bonds will ensure that whole objects will be affected. Using Sigmarsson's resonance function, uh, shadow photons, and the darkening effect, Dr. E. Herman Sigmarsson. In conclusion, the fifth test was a complete success, the only losses being the two Orion tubes and one MO5 sphere. However, these could hardly be called losses, not because of the relatively small cost of the equipment but more so due to the fact that changes in their chemical structure and the formation of these unknown liquid crystal compounds will provide our team with new studying material. Dr. Michael Bain. Uh, anamorphic disc. Today we received something called an anamorphic disc. It is supposedly capable of cutting the black monolith. It came in an external shipment, the details of which are oddly kept away from all of us, lowly engineers. At first glance, it is a rather unimpressive rubbery disc 20 centimeters in diameter and 1 centimeter thick, gray in color, of a rough texture, made out of some of made out of some unknown synthetic material we were explicitly instructed not to scan to keep in cryo except during use. This thing, it, this thing is something no sane person would see as a cutting tool, let alone something that could damage an object as impervious as the black monolith. However, after doing some testing at the shop, we now view the anamorphic disc in a completely different light. The disc arrived with a ZR SG88M large diameter grinder uh, on whose end it was to be attached, which frankly gave us a comically disproportionate appearance. Speaking of comical, 
Are we really expected to believe that such a primitive tool as a mechanical grinder with a rubber gasket at, it, at its end will achieve what the most technologically advanced lasers and plasma cutters at our disposal can't? These thoughts went through all of our minds, and then we fired the thing up. In the span of a second, the disc flattened while tripling in diameter, its gray color becoming much lighter in shade. In this state, the disc could cut anything we tested it on, pseudo-brass, steel, all the way to stronger alloys and minerals, even a G5 rated diamond, and did so with little resistance. Will it cut the monolith? That'd be its ultimate test. We're instructed to modify a strongman to use the grinder and ensure that it is capable of performing the cut, taking all the potential variables into account. No idea how they came up with those, but what do I know? I'm just an engineer. Hopefully the cut will be performed tomorrow, after which I will follow another report. Chief Station Engineer Boris Grayson. Okay. So yeah, they definitely shouldn't have been uh, messing with this thing. So as soon as they cut that bad boy open, that's, uh, I'm assuming that's what if they went to crap for him. Okay, so we are going to wage war here. So I was told that I don't need to, um, the same commenter who told me to not attack at some point. I'm not sure exactly when I wasn't supposed to attack, uh, but he said I could fight these void creatures and I won't be missing anything. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, I'm not encumbered. I'm fine with fighting them. Oh, I forgot to drink juice. Crap. Hold on, I did a quick save, right? Yeah. So I'll do that real quick. Yeah, this is my recent quick save. Alright. We'll do this again. Oh yeah, I need to drink juice because we know what the these creatures are made out of, so we know that juice will allow us to fight them. There we go, void creature. I actually have a very high chance of hitting these guys. I have an idea. Is this better for fighting you? That did pretty good damage. Also, I want to try something before we leave real quick. Can I hit this thing? I can. Yeah, the shadow lift can be hit by the uh, ethereal torch. Let's do it. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but... Alright, so that's what's spawning the creatures. Okay, so it makes sense to destroy them. And it's immune to being intimidated. That's fine. I'm doing a lot of damage to this thing, it's just not going down. So I thought about destroying the Shadow Lith because we destroyed those, uh... Those black rocks... In the, um... The Native's Temple. Right? And some more Shadow Dust. It's so the same Shadow Dust we found at the, uh... Okay, cool. So yeah, it is the same material, so that this part that they cut off was what was being worshipped by the natives. 
Neat. Where's how to get out of here? We're done here. Well, cool. I feel I feel pretty good outside of some of the lore and stuff that requires a high intelligence and willpower. I feel like I found most, if not everything, in the Black Sea that I could uh, with my build. I'm looking for Todd. I want to talk to him again. I don't know where he is. I don't hear his breathing. I think he's in his room. Or in a room. I just want to look around real quick. He might be further back towards the entrance. He might be standing next to the submersible. Let's go back and check. Alright, no, I must have just missed him. Let's go back and see if I can find him. Todd, where you at, buddy? Let's go to the security and see if I can find him on surveillance. Nope, no luck, okay. Did he run into the area that I just left, by chance? He couldn't have. He couldn't have run that way. He would have had to come this way. Let's just run through again real quick, see if we can see him. I don't want to leave him behind, if I can help it. I guess I don't have a choice. Alright, I don't know where he's at. Um, I think I'll just leave. I'll do a save before I leave, just in case um, maybe someone knows where he's at. And then I can reload and come and get him. So he could hit, be hidden by like a perception check. I don't have very high perception. Uh, so I will do like a before regret save. Oh, he's in my sub... Okay. A pair of eyes stare at you, tinted with fearful determination. M Mr. Invictus? I nod. Are you sure you want to do this? He nods silently. Welcome aboard. He nods with a slight smile. Uh, don't be afraid. It's time to surface. Alright, let's surface. 
I should have slowed. Oh, can I slow it down? We'll slow it down. Someone recommended we should slow it down for these uh, cutscene. Another beacon. The station must be close. So sorry if my voice sounds a little funny. My throat's giving me some trouble. <laughs> Why does? No questions. Don't fall apart, darn it. Breathing speeds up. But he closes his eyes and calms down. Good job, buddy. There should be a beacon here, but everything's dark. There's a lot of dust particles in the water, though. Uh oh. Hmm. Looks up. What was... Shh. What was that? You stare outside. The walls are getting closer. You're descending into a gorge of some kind. Should I? Because I'm going up. How much? We're almost there. Comes faint, gloomy shapes of sunken vessels and debris around before you before descending into darkness. I don't think that we should be descending. We should be uh we should be surfacing. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. The descriptions were not what these should have been. Uh, is this the surface? It is. Now about you. Me? I gotta find him a- okay. Now this world is dangerous and will swallow you in seconds. You can't take care of yourself, but I can't take care of you either due to the nature of my life. I'll find someone who will, though. You stay here, and I'll be back as soon as I find you a new home. He smiles. Thank you, Mr. Invictus. I'll stay here. I'll be good. I won't touch anything. Good. See ya. Alright, so we need to find him a home. Um, I feel like there's a few options. I feel like any of the uh, factions, right? You probably give them to Aegis. I wonder if you can give him to the ferryman. So I wiped out the pirates. Let's um. Yehoda, let's see where's the ferryman? Pirate base, perfect. That's near where I'm at. So we'll talk to him. So I keep adjusting my headset. I don't know if y'all can hear it creaking or not, but a, I think there's a hair in my headset poking me right in the, almost in the brain, right through my ear. I wouldn't go this way. Plus this way it ensures the ferryman's legacy. So if he dies, there'd still be a ferryman. Cause the Black Sea always needs a ferryman. Or will always need a ferryman.
Oh, you find the ferryman busy as always. I guess I could use a break. What do you need this time? Well, I will barter with you. Oh, I forgot how these aren't spears in my inventory. Wait, no, they're on the... Wait, do I? This is like crap. I know I was lugging that stuff around. Alright, anyway, I found the last living Lemurian. His eyes broaden. Lemurian. Uh, from a... Oh uh, yeah, let's say two. Yep, there's still one around. Picked him up from an abyssal station at the bottom of the sea. Hmm, the submarine. Yeah, he's in that very submarine. I was wondering if you'd take him with you. He's a grown man, somewhat underdeveloped mentally. But I think he's ready for a new life. The last Lemurian. He puffs smoke high up, his gaze clinging to the stalactites uh, above before dripping it down. Dropping it down. Why me, kid? I can't take care of him, and he's not capable of taking care of himself outside the confines of his former home. I can't leave someone like that on his own, but I also have to be careful who I leave him with. He ponders, the smoke from his pipe clinging to his beard and hair as though his head is overheating, courtesy of an air current blowing in his face. After a while he re after a while he responds, fine kid, fine. My heart ain't made of stone, I'll take him in. Besides, I've spent years in this sea searching for relics, now come forth with the living one. A living, breathing human being. Where's the submarine? Is it where I left it? He pulls from his pocket and unfolds an old stained map of the Black Sea. Uh, yes, right there. Show him on the map where the submarine is located. He marks it on the map and folds it. I'll pick him up as soon as I'm finished here. I'll just tell him Mr. Invictus sent you. He nods. Anything else before I leave, kid? Alright, well... Yeah, I think he'll be... I think I'll be fine with the ferryman. I should go back and check on him real quick, though. See if he's getting picked up. So I told him I would come back for him. Come back and let him know. And that's what we'll do. We'll go back and let him know unless he's already gone, in which case, best of luck. Yeah, when he's gone. Can I dive again? I shouldn't. I shouldn't get back down there. There's nothing for me down there. Alright, let's head back to the expedition camp, and in the next episode we'll, uh... I guess wrap up the... the DLC. I've explored every nook and cranny that I could. Uh, sadly, since I don't have a willpower or an intelligence build, I missed out on a lot of the lore. But there have been some uh, helpful commenters who have been explaining some of the lore as we go, so if you're interested, uh, feel free to go back and look through the comments. Honestly, it seems like willpower is the best route. Uh, the intelligence, I think, helps you with Ingwar and uh, the ferryman. But willpower helps you with all like the uh, the mysterious artifacts that you find. 
which I think is far more fascinating. Yeah, we gained, what, three levels in the Black Sea? And we're almost... Need 15 experience points to level up. So that's pretty good. 26 will be level 27. Only three levels left. Alright. Yeah, we'll be bringing all this stuff back with us. Be a small jet ski ride. Unless they force us like fast travel back to the... Core city, which I hope is not the case. Oops. Okay, can I talk to him about anything? Yeah, what do you know about the ferryman? I think I've already talked to him about this. Yeah, I've already talked about that. Alright, so firearm and ammunition are satisfactory, high tech equipment, supplies, satisfactory. Medical supplies are almost non existent. They barely have any jet skis left, that was my fault. Okay, cool. All right, I don't want to head down the uh, the dialogue path yet. Uh, we'll talk to Dr. Professor Oldfield in the next episode and wrap up the Expedition DLC, I believe. I mean, we found what we came here for, so. Yep, that looks like it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode.